Hi, Chris Potts here. This short screencast does a very brief walkthrough of the small reader I put together called Perspectives on Meaning and Interpretation. The reader offers some excerpts from our Partee reading and a few others, and I stitched those pieces together with some prose of my own. So I think the reader can mostly stand on its own, but it's new for me this year, and so I started to feel a bit unsure, and that led me to think that some commentary about it wouldn't hurt. So the core questions for this reader are given in the overview section here. We're thinking about the interpretation function, these double brackets, and we want to ask two foundational and, dare I say, philosophical questions about this function. First, what are meanings? That is, what comes out of this function when we feed language into it? Second, what's the nature of the connection that we're making between forms and meanings with this interpretation function? It's actually pretty easy to take a lot of semantics classes without ever asking these questions in a serious way. Now, to some extent, I suppose that's defensible. After all, when you take a math class, it's not like they spend time discussing what numbers are. They just dive into doing math, and they generally leave the conceptual and metaphysical question of what numbers are to the philosophers or to the philosophy of math or to a metamathematics class or something. And to some extent, we can do a similar thing if we wish for these core questions. We can sidestep them and just get down to exploring linguistic phenomena and trying to build theories that support testable predictions. But that doesn't feel totally right to me. I feel we do well to think seriously about these conceptual questions a bit, since I think it might actually affect what we explore, the questions we ask, and what we think results in the field should look like. So let's dive into that. In section two, we encounter our first excerpt. It's from the Partee reading that you're doing in parallel to this. And it explicitly takes the position that we should sidestep our two big questions and get down to work, at least on my reading. It does substantiate this a bit, though, with this piece called Lewis's Advice and a second principle called Cresswell's Principle. Together, these map out a theory in which we're going to use sets and functions to model truth conditions and truth conditions will take into be major components of the theory of meaning. So I'll let you study these excerpts in detail. Two bits of advice though. First, thinking carefully about Cresswell's principle is crucial for assignment one. And what you'll really wanna do is have in mind what it says about truth conditions as important to meaning, but not necessarily all there is to meaning. Okay, but here's the, here's the crux of this. We have all this talk of truth, what do we mean by truth? Again, Parti is taking a stance that says we needn't get too worried about what we mean by truth. But still, in adopting Cresswell's principle and putting truth conditions in a spotlight, we seem to be saying that the real world, some notion of objective reality, is what meanings are in some sense, because surely that's what truth is defined with respect to. Now, in the next section, extensions and intention, we problematize this notion a bit, right? We can't limit ourselves to the actual world, to our reality. We need to think about hypothetical realities, what people call possible worlds uh, in this literature, and what are actually meant to be entirely separate universes with no causal connections to our own. Still, though, this is a kind of realist theory, even if the realities are hypothetical, on this view, meanings aren't in the head, for sure. That brings us to Jackendoff. So Ray Jackendoff is a renowned philosopher, linguist, and cognitive scientist. And in a nutshell, his position is that meanings are in the head. They're mental representations. And he's actually quite critical of the externalist or realist or non-cognitive position that Parti seems to be taking to meaning. In these excerpts, he gives some high-level theoretical ideas, and then he zooms in on the issue of truth conditions and how they need to be refashioned if we're going to adopt his cognitive internalist position. Finally, on to this final excerpt. So far, we've been kind of focused on the question of what, what is meaning. Now we want to move to the second question. What's the nature of the form-meaning connection that we're capturing in our interpretation function? Parti seems to just want to build it and see what consequences specific claims have in that context. For Jackendorf, this captures some mental associations that are core to our knowledge of language, but I don't think he probes that too much. What about Lewis? David Lewis is an incredibly influential philosopher with an amazing beard. Uh, with Barbara Parti, he was actually one of the people who laid the foundations of modern semantic theory. And incidentally, 
He and Barbara happen to be undergraduates together at Swarthmore, which has produced a lot of famous linguists and philosophers. So what does Lewis do in this famous paper called Languages and Language? Well, first, he restates the basics of the sort of theory that Partee is building and that we'll build. And here he seems to be channeling the version of himself that wrote the famous paper General Semantics. But then he continues with a different view where the form meaning associations captured by the interpretation function are actually complex social conventions. And here he seems to be channeling the version of himself that wrote the famous and beautiful book, book Convention. On this view, our knowledge of language is somewhat akin to our knowledge of what it means to be polite or to follow traffic laws, certainly things that are external to our minds in some deep and mysterious way. Now, to wrap up here, stepping back, which of these views is correct? It's very hard to say. Uh, the right answer might in fact depend on your goals and perspectives and so forth. So we're not gonna try to come to an answer as a group. But I am hoping that each one of you becomes somewhat opinionated about the right way to approach these core questions and concepts. In the meantime, I'll confess, as a class, we'll sort of end up following Partee's advice and Lewis's advice and Cresswell and just try to build predictive theories of meaning interp and interpretation, remaining agnostic about whether they're in the head or just social conventions or some complex mix of those ideas.